Photoshop is a little bit easier to deal with. So I'm going to talk a little bit about Photoshop. And I know uh, the, some of you were in uh, Gene's class and you're learning Photoshop, right? Okay, good. So you have a little experience with Photoshop. So in this case, let's say I like the Nikon site. You saw that, that I downloaded it. It's on my desktop here. And you can see the screen grabs right here. In fact, I like the McDonald's site better. Where's McDonald's? There it is. I wouldn't eat at McDonald's, but I do like their website. There we go. What I liked about their website was the big images and the simple menu. So let's say I really like that menu that's on the side over here, this menu inside of Photoshop. Okay, you can zoom in. Of course, I just zoomed in. And you, so if you have something open in Photoshop, I tend to zoom in and zoom out. If you want to see how big it would be on a website or um, you want to be able to measure and make a relationship between what you're seeing in the screen and how big it would be on, on, a, on a page um, inside of Photoshop, there's a zoom factor right here. And that zoom factor, when it says 100% at the top up there, and what I mean by zoom is where you're getting closer or zooming out, zooming in. It's command plus and command minus. But when you look at it at 100%, that is where the pixels are matching in the screen to the screen that you're looking at. So what I'm trying to say is it's 100%. The, pack, the pixels in the document are matching the pixels on the screen. So let's talk about the menu. Part of what I like about this menu is, is it's kind of along the left side there, which is not normal because most people, they make menus kind of across the top of the website, right? The most boring, use, useful way of doing it is put it across the top. So I kind of like the idea that McDonald's did it on the side, and they had some images. So how big is this menu, you say to yourself? I like this. It kind of fits. What size is it, right? What size is it? Well, there's a couple ways of measuring things inside of Photoshop. Okay, of course you have rulers, and if you see them, if you don't see the rulers, they're kind of along the side over here or around the top. If you don't see rulers, you can always say view rulers right here. That'll bring those up. But that's not very precise. I mean, you can kind of guess and things like that. There's also a measuring tool inside of Photoshop. You say, well, ah, I love this menu along the side. How long is it? Or how tall is it? How can I measure? Well, inside of Photoshop, underneath the eyedropper, I guess, yeah, this is an eyedropper tool. There's one called the ruler tool. The ruler tool. Hey, you all remember using a ruler in high school or mi middle school, right? Well, in Photoshop, you have a ruler tool. And how the ruler tool works is you can drag along a document. So I'm going to just kind of draw a line. And as I'm drawing the line, you can see the numbers across the top up here. Right here. If you don't see them at the top, they're hard to see at the top. But if you draw a line, it'll tell you. So this menu is 302 pixels, probably 300 pixels from top to bottom. Okay, Where's that number? It's this one right here, height. Now there's zero for width because I didn't draw a line width. I just drew the height. So that's one quick way that you can get to find out how big something is inside of Photoshop. What, and why, why did we do this? Well, when you're drawing or making a layout of your own idea, you should actually have the idea of how big it's going to be on the screen. You need to give people information. Hey, this is going to be 300 pixels across the screen. Hey. What if I wanted to know how big the entire menu is? The ruler might be a little bit cumbersome like that. Here's the quickest and easiest way. So I love this menu. I like the width and I like the height. How do I know what the width and height is? Probably the easiest way to do that is to use the selection tool, the rectangle, in this case, the rectangle selection tool. And I'm going to start in the upper left corner and kind of drag to the lower right corner right here. Now it's giving me inches as I'm drawing it. Do you see the numbers right here? They're kind of popping up right there. Do you see them? There's numbers popping up, but they're in inches. Um, so an easier way might be to copy it. So I'm going to say Command C on the keyboard, or of course, if you're using a Bill Gates computer, Control C, and then say File New, File New. When you do that, it'll actually take the pixels that you copied and put them in there. So this this box that I just ma made around the menu is 95 pixels by 308 pixels. 
So again, all I did was copy this and then say File New, and it'll take whatever you copied and put it in there. And you can say OK and then paste, and it's all by itself. It, it recognized what I copied, right? So if I, anything, if I say, oh, I love this, this just this box right here. It's a good size box. I think it's the size I want to use. I use Command C to copy, and then I say File New. And it'll recognize whatever space that you've copied. Also, how did you use the ruler? How did I use the ruler? Uh -huh. The ruler is located, let me go back to my first screen. The ruler is located underneath the eyedropper tool, or, or the third one down on the right side here. It's called the ruler tool. And to use the ruler tool, you draw a line about around what you want to measure. And when you're done drawing, it'll tell you up here in the options up here at the top. This is 305. Is there a what? Is that 305 pixels? That's measured in pixels, yes. Add what? Oh, to use both? Um, I don't know. That's a good question. Um, no, I don't know. I can do, there might be a way to save it. Use measurement scale. Um. There's a new there's a new button right here, new preset to find tools. No, I don't know. If you can do more than one line. I use the measurement tool a lot. Mostly I use the measurement tool for straightening an image, right? You've all done it before, I hope. If you haven't, I'll teach you the best Photoshop trick ever in the entire planet. Okay? Best Photoshop trick ever. So let me open up a photo. Hold on, let me find a, the right picture. I need a, I need a photo. Oof, no. There, I'm gonna use this one. So if I want to straighten anything out, so I, I, I like the guy's hat here, okay, but I want it to be straight, okay, straight up and down, because it, it's tilted a little bit, right? Using the measurement tool right here, you draw a line along the axis that is, you know, like this guy's hat. I want it to, I want it to be straight up and down. So use the measurement tool, draw a long line along the angle. Now, Photoshop recognizes the angle that you drew that. And if you go under image, rotate image, use arbitrary, arbitrary, and it'll take into consideration the angle that you drew the line, and it will rotate the image with the angle that you drew to straighten it out. So this should be straight up and down now on the hat. You see how I did that? Best Photoshop trick ever. You you all take photos of things that are a little bit off. Nothing's ever straight, right? You draw a line along the axis you want. Like I want his hat to be straight here, up and down. I draw a line along it using the ruler tool, the same one we were using to measure. And if you go under image, rotate, and use arbitrary, it'll take into consideration the angle that you drew it and you can say either clockwise or counterclockwise we want to go clockwise right we want it to go clockwise and we hit OK and now this should be straight up and down it's an easy way to rotate and get something perfect okay Photoshop trick of the day I learned that about 12 years ago I was like woohoo Okay, let's let's make our own layout. Okay, so I went through and I planned and I thought and I drew my ideas all out and now I'm ready to work inside of Photoshop. I know you're probably not there yet, but I wanted you to start practicing Photoshop now. 
You should start practicing in these applications daily. You have to become a master at them to be able to use them efficiently. So in this case, if I'm, I'm saying, okay, I'm going to make a new website, okay, I need to come up with a plan. So I go under File, New. Under File, New, there's some presets inside of Photoshop, right? Presets. And if you go down to the one that says Web, you even have, you have presets for Web as well as mobile apps, as, as well as iconography right there. Okay, so if you say web, it's going to give you standard screen sizes in here. Okay, what are the standard screen sizes? Well, these are the dimensions in pixels from width and height of standard monitors. They also have retina display. Do you see that? Retina. Basically, we'll do a whole talk about retina display in the class. I don't want to start with that today, but we will have a class that we'll talk about retina display. But for right now, I'm going to use the most common one. How about the web most common? That sounds good, right? Let's choose web most common and then hit OK. Okay, so what you can do is you can cut the pieces out from other websites and put them in here. Remember, I like the McDonald's menu, right? And we've already taken a picture of that. Where was that? Where was it? Where was that? Where was it? There it is. Okay. So let me close some of this. I got too many menus open up here. Let me even close this one. Close this one. Oh, I think I closed the one I just made. Okay, here's my McDonald's one. Uh, what else did I like? I don't like that one. I also like uh, some of the pieces on the, um, was it Nikon or Epson? Yeah. I kind of like the, the earth kind of thing on the Epson one, right? So, and then again, I was making a new layout, and I was using web, and I was using most common. Okay, so I have a blank document inside of Photoshop. In addition, I have some, some screen captures that I have taken already. So I like the menu here for McDonald's, so I'm going to cut it out using what I just chose, the, the rectangle selection tool. I'm going to cut this menu out. In fact, even like the pull down menu, I'm going to cut this whole piece out here. I'm going to copy this. Command C and go over to my blank layout and paste it. Command V. Whoosh. Uh, there we go. I really like that. Now to move things around in Photoshop, there's a move tool right here in the upper corner, and you can grab that and move things around. If I zoom in again, I can see it. Of course, I don't want all the pieces. I don't want these these black area here. So I can use this selection tool again, the selection tool again, and I can actually cut pieces out. I can. I'm going to cut this piece out here, and I'm going to cut the bottom piece out here. Here we go. It's okay if I cut a little bit away. Now, of course, I'm not doing uh, McDonald's. I am doing ugly tubs. Right? Doing ugly tubs. So, of course, I might not have food in my menu. So, how can I change my menu? Well, you can simply remove parts. I can use the eyedropper tool and I can suck up. Remember, the eyedropper tool is the same spot where the ruler was. I can select the color of the background there. Right? And then I can, I can then. I don't know, there's a variety of different tools. You can paint over top of it using a paintbrush. You can select an area and say, edit fill, edit fill. And what fill does is that you can fill an area in with color. So remember, I, I used the eyedropper tool and I sucked up the red color that was underneath it. I can then use edit fill and I can fill with my foreground color, which is the red that I chose. And I can cover and remove that text. Now I have a blank one that I can type my own text on, right? Okay, so it's very easy if you like other things to go and take them from other websites and then make your own. You know, if I wanted to, I can use my text tool now. Um, you might have thought of the font you want to use first. If it's a center menu or left align, you can choose that. 
And of course, we're doing tubs, right? Tubs. You know, of course, it's it's making the text in the same color as the background. And whoosh, that's pretty ugly. Trubs, trubs, trubs. T rubs. There we go. Tubs. And then there we go. Again, the move tool is this one. Using the arrow keys on the keyboard will help you move things around also. See, I just stole the McDonald's menu and made my own. Okay. Again, these are just plain Photoshop things. What are some of the things I did? Well, I copied and pasted from one document to the other, right? I also um, removed areas by selecting them and hitting the delete key on the keyboard. I also changed the color of something. To fill in an area with color, you select the area and you can then say edit fill, edit fill. Oh, for some reason, oh, I'm in the text layer. See, bad, bad, bad. Got to be in a layer with the color. This is my menu. And then say edit fill and fill it in with the color. Boom. And there you go. Let's steal from another website. Again, we have a screen capture here of the Nikon website. I like the, 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 the earth kind of thing that they have going here. Again, I can use my selection tool and select an area. What's that? To make it like the same menu that's currently there, is that what you're saying? Yeah. How do I know what font they use? I just was guessing what kind of font. I don't. I don't know. You, since these are screen captures, you really can't tell what font they use. So you, you can go into the probably in the programming and, and see. Okay. So I'm going to copy this. And I know we haven't talked about fonts yet, but we're going to start talking about fonts in the next couple classes. You should start doing some research into the fonts. So here we go. Look at that. We got we got tubs. And where do you want to buy a bathtub? Africa, Oceania, the Americas, Europe. Then of course you might have made your logo in Illustrator, right? So here we go. We're gonna go make our logo in Illustrator. So, and then we can bring that into Photoshop too. So, let's look at Illustrator for a moment. I'm going to use RGB. I'm going to worry about size right this moment. And of course, we're making bathtubs, right? So, here we go. We're going to draw a bathtub. There's a tub. It's got some feet. There we go. That's a bathtub. Let me undo. Let me do that again. Here we go. There's a tub. Now we need some feet. There's my feet. And maybe some water in there. There we go. And what's it called? Ugly tub. I spell ugly U L G Y. Ugly? No. I spell ugly. Lowercase? Oh. Ugly? Yeah. U G. U ugly. U G L. U G L Y. There we go. Ugly tub. T U B. There we go. Ugly tub. There it is. What, ugly font too. Ugly font with an ugly tub. Okay, if you remember inside of Illustrator, if you want to shrink the artboard down, because if you save this like it is and then bring it into Photoshop, it's going to bring all that big white area that you have there. Yeah, you have a question? What's that? 
Yeah, in Photoshop, the, the bathtub part? Yeah. yeah, I just made a real quick ugly tub. So, in this case, if you are drawing and using things from Photoshop or from Illustrator into Photoshop, you want to shrink the artboard down so it goes just around the art that you have. You select the art that you have selected and you go underneath Object, Artboards, Fit to Art, Fit to Selected. I think I've showed you this already. I don't know if I did or not. Again, it's under Object, Artboards, Fit to Selected Art. It shrinks it down. Then save it. You can save as Illustrator, AI. Illustrator is fine. The AI format is fine. Okay. Leave all the default settings. If you go over to Photoshop and you want to bring your logo in that you made inside of Illustrator, you can go underneath File, Place. Now, they have place embedded or place link, right? They don't have that inside of it, Illustrator. So the difference between place embedded means it'll become part of the Photoshop file. Place link, it'll still link it to the original one. Why would you do that? So you can change the original one. It'll automatically update inside of Photoshop. If you use the place embedded, it's going to become part of Photoshop, and you can't change the original and automatically update. So. It's up to you how you want to do it. I think place, I'm going to say embed. And then we had, what, what did I call it? Ugly tub. There it is. Okay, so it's going to ask you a couple questions when you're importing it. Do you want to import it as a page, as an image, as a 3D? Now, we really haven't talked about 3D. So um, if you say a page and you hit OK, it'll bring it in, and you can put it where you want it. You can scale it also. Notice how it has this little icon over here in the object. That means it's a smart object. Has Jean taught you about smart objects? I don't know what she's been teaching you in your class. I don't know if I need to teach you these things is what I'm trying to say. What is the advantage of a smart object? Does anybody know? Why would I use this? Notice what I just said, place, page. So what the advantage of a smart object is, is it's taking the account of the original vector file, right? The original Illustrator thing. So when you scale it, it kind of keeps that information in there. Look at it. See how I'm scaling it really big, right? And it's not all pixelated, right? Think If you tried doing that with something that wasn't a vector, right? it would then blow all the pixels up and it would be blurry by now, right? But this is called a smart object, so it keeps the original vector information in the object so that you can scale it big and scale it small without it being pixelated. You know what I mean by that? Do you, do you understand? Yeah? If I hit this, hit place. Look, it's beautiful. So again, it's called a smart object. It's right here. It's in Photoshop. It happens when you import from like a vector program. You can when you copy and paste from Illustrator to Photoshop, it'll ask you this also. Do you want to paste it as a smart object? Do you want to use a smart object so that you can do the scaling? It keeps the original vector information. See how nice and sharp it is, right? It does it automatically when you bring an Illustrator file in. When I was placing it, it asked me for page, image or um, 3D. We can do another one. Let's try. Let's see the difference between this one and the image. Watch what happens when I go file, place. Remember that? And then I went to Illustrator. And let's try image this time. See where it says image right here? And I don't know why it won't let me even bring it in as an image. So hey, it's not even going to let me do it. Hey, you got to choose page. I'm assuming it, it, when you say image, it wants to make it into a raster, and then you try and scale it. You just scale in pixels. So you can copy and paste. It does the same. So here I am in Illustrator, right? I'm in Illustrator. I'm in Illustrator. I can copy my artwork. Command C. Copy my vectors. Go over to Photoshop and hit Command V. Here we go again. It's asking you when you copy and paste from Illustrator to Photoshop, do I want a smart object, pixels, path, shape layer? 
Okay, so what is the advantage of them? Okay, well, of course, you just saw the smart object, right? We just looked at that. You can scale it, and it keeps its vector information. That's very... Now, if I say pixels, it, you know, I won't be able to scale it. It actually pasted it as, you know, dots, like pixels. And then paths, it's going to bring over the, the lines as a path. So that, that's not really going to work. But the shape layer is a good one, though. Why, why would I use the shape layer? What would the advantage of a shape layer be? You, you, sh you will be able to recolor it. You should be able to recolor it. So if I say shape layer here, hit OK. Notice how it's red. See, it's red now. Oh, my text didn't come over either, did it? I don't know why my text didn't come over. Maybe I didn't have it selected. But see how it's red? The shape layer is red. I'm having problems to move. Oh, there we go. So I can scale it, though. See, I can scale it. Mm -hmm. And it brings it over as a shape. And so if you have a shape inside of Photoshop, what can you do? Well, there is a shape layer in Photoshop, a shape layer right here. If I could find it, where's my shape? Oh, here it is. Properties, here it is. Shape. Okay, so there's, there's some properties that you can deal with in the shape. One of them is you can change the color of it, right? That's what that, the advantage of it. Oh, I think I have to apply it. Okay, so I could change the color. Green bathtub. Oh, it didn't change. How do I change it? I know there's a way to change it. You got a density. Woo, that's the outside. This is feather. Woo, look at that. Oh, there's selection. You can select it. And this is apply mask. These are kind of new to me, too. I can't fill in. Hey, choose the color before you bring in the shape layer. How about that? I don't know. Where? Where at? Yeah, it won't let me choose these. Oh, this is kind of new to me. This is new when they started doing this. You used to be able to change the color of the shape layer in the layer itself right here. You used to have a little thumbnail right here where you can change the color in the old version of Photoshop. Um, I don't know. Okay, so smart object, bring in layers. We copied and pasted from other ones. Um, uh, probably the smart object's the best one. There we go. And always use the move tool when you're done to place it where you need it to be. So we got ugly tubs, we got tubs. Let's talk about a background, and then um, maybe you can tell me about your project and how the progress is. So let's do a, just a couple more things. And um, the reason why I'm showing you these now is so that you start practicing. You're going to have to, you know, what you should do this week is do some of the things I've just did. You know, go in, copy, paste. You got to practice your Photoshop, make new new files. I don't have um, directions on how to do that, but I recorded this. You can go watch the video again. But you really need to learn how to do this if you're going to make an effective interface, how to bring pieces in from different options. Uh, I'll go over how to make things too. I know we just stole things today, but I'll go over how to make your own buttons using the shape tools. These are the ones I use primarily to make interfaces, these ones, in Photoshop. So if you want to start making things in Photoshop, the reason why I use these ones is they're vector tools inside of Photoshop. So you can manipulate them, make them bigger and smaller, with them still having the vector information. Okay, just like you have in Illustrator, right? You have all those vector things right here. It looks like the stuff you have in Illustrator too, doesn't it? The other, other advantage is you could use these tools to make a button with text in it and effects on it, and then you can duplicate it <coughs> over and over again. Okay? And then, so if you want to make a menu that goes across your page like this, you can make one of them, right? Make one of them with the text in it using the, these tools, and then duplicate it over here and just change the text, duplicate it. So we're going to make menus like that. Maybe we'll do that Wednesday. Just practice the copying and pasting is what I want you to do. Cutting things from one website and putting it in another. Um, what was the last thing? Oh, it's going to do background. Last thing is the background. Okay, now there's a, normally inside of Photoshop there is a background layer, right? It's called background right here. 
Um, the problem with the background layer is that it is not um, not a real layer. It's kind of like a fake layer. So usually what I do is I get rid of it and make a blank a blank background layer. Or if you double click on it, it'll convert it to a normal layer. So when you see it with italic text like that, it's it's kind of a special kind of background that um, I don't know. It's 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 I don't know why it's there. But if you double click on it, you can make it into a normal layer. And once it's a normal layer, you can manipulate it in any way. So uh, I really love, what I really like is, in one of my examples, I saw, I, I saw gradient. Let me see, which one was that? Was it there? Was it there? 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 There was a beautiful gradient. Is it there? Oh, not the ducky. Oh, there's the bathtubs. There it is. I like the gradient in this Nikon one right here. This really subtle, see the gradient that's back there, right there? It's really cool. So how can I steal that background? Well, probably the easiest way is I can recreate the gradient inside of Photoshop. How can I recreate the gradient? Well, I can use the eyedropper and select the colors. Okay, so in this case, inside of Photoshop, you have a gradient tool. It's right here. <coughs> just like you have in Photoshop or in Illustrator there's a gradient tool in the gradient tool you have a gradient box up here you have options okay gradient tool gradient options up here if you click on it it'll actually ask you for colors now, you might have seen this this is kind of the same same kind of gradient box you have inside of Illustrator it looks similar to this right you have colors here color here here Okay, so here's one color right here. So what can I do with that color? Well, I can come over here and select. And notice it has an eyedropper, or it has the look, it has this tool right here. See it? It's the eyedropper. See it? So again, I clicked on the gradient tool right here. Then I went all the way up to the gradient options. It opened up this window. I clicked on this to select the color, and then I can come over here and select the color with the eyedropper. And so, oh, I love this blue, whatever, the, it's like a purplish blue. Boom. Oh, it didn't work, did it? Ugh, why did it not work? Oh, the opacity is at 22%. Why? I can't change the color here. Oh, here, the color's the bottom one. That was my mistake. Color's the bottom one. Let's try again. There we go. Oh, beautiful. And then this one's a color over here, and it's kind of down here, right? But the opacity is at 0%. We've got to turn that up all the way. Okay, there we go. So again, the top one is opacity, opacity, and the bottom one's color, color. So again, I use the eyedropper to select the bottom of the color, and then click on this one and select the top one. So now I have my gradient, right? I can hit OK. I can go back to my original layout. Here's the layout that I was working on, right? Right? So I went and opened up one. I stole the colors from it. I go back to my original one. Notice how I have my layer one, zero selected right here. See it? And I can draw a line, and it'll make my gradient go. Isn't that a beautiful background? Okay, so I stole the colors from one and opened up my other document, my second document that I was working on, and I drew a line using the gradient tool. I drew a line. So you can draw a line, it draws a gradient any way you want to draw it. The gradient editor, uh, again I was in a different document, I was in this document right here, and I went to the gradient tool, which is this one right here, then at the top is some options, all the way up here in the upper left corner is the options right here. If you click on that, you can then use the eyedropper to change the color of this one. Uh, again, I click here the gradient tool, here the gradient options, this one up here. Gives you the options here, the gradient editor, and then you can click on these little squares right here, these little squares, and use it to select the colors you want. Whatever color you want. Ooh, I like that one. That one's kind of nice. 
once you have the gradient made the way you want it, you, you don't have to be in this document. You can go back to your other document and draw a line. Ooh, that's even better. Uh -huh. Did you see how? Did, did you see how to change it? Colors? I can help you if you want. Any questions about that? You would just have to watch the video. I know this is a, a lot of just basic Photoshop things. Uh, the reason why I wanted to show them to you today is so that you can start practicing. Practice. You need to practice. You'll get better at it as you start. Um,